we we don't need to try and make LabVIEW do all the same things that Python does. Um, we'd rather just allow our community to leverage the things that they love about Python. If they're comfortable doing certain things in Python, we want them to be able to uh, do those in Python rather than having to learn how to do them in LabVIEW. Hey guys, welcome to Embedded Toolbox, the video interview series where we try to save the world by solving one engineering challenge at a time. And a challenge today is blending the old with the new, as we discussed in our first episode with NI on the latest version of LabVIEW. We've now brought on Austin Stanton, who is a senior solutions marketer at NI to talk about Python uh, being used with LabVIEW. How are you doing today, Austin? I'm doing fantastic, happy to be here. Great, thanks for joining us. Um, so. As I said, you know, Python is really popular, extremely popular in yep. other portions of the uh, of the development of the tech industry. Um, not as much in traditional embedded engineering environments, but it's making its way in. What makes Python an attractive language and tool uh, for these types of uh, use cases? Yeah, so I think what makes Python attractive for these use cases is just generally what makes it attractive for, for all of the use cases uh, right now. Uh, number one, um, it's it's very simple. Um, you know, it's syntax is very straightforward. It's uh, very accessible for engineers that don't have a, uh, a background in programming or a lot of experience in programming. Uh, next, it's just really versatile. So, you know, you can do anything from uh, data analysis uh, to AI and machine learning uh, stuff with it. So it's it's one programming language that you can learn that will open a lot of different doors, a lot of different things that you can do with it. Uh, and then finally, I'd say um, the fact that it's free uh, is obviously <laughs> be a big plus. It's always good. <laughs> yeah, free and open source. So there's a huge amount of um, libraries and resources that can help a huge community so that if, if you run into an issue or you need help getting started, uh, you can always leverage that community and, and get there much faster. So I'd say those are some of the, the simple reasons why Python is uh, popular everywhere and is getting more and, pop, more and more popular in the test and measurement field. In the last episode, David Prita walked us through a, you know, a rather simple temperature measurement using LabVIEW. Can you Take us through that same or a similar example and apply some of your Python expertise to it. Okay, so what I've got here is this is the um, the temperature measurement um, setup that that David had already put together. Um, basically, what I have here is I have a CDAC uh, system, a four slot CDAC system, and I have this uh, thermocouple input module. Um, so right now it is actually reading uh, the temperature from this thermocouple. You can see that if I put my fingers on there, you can see that graph slowly start to rise uh, and that number go up. Um, when David did it, he was taking his measurement in Celsius, in Celsius, which I'm not familiar with Celsius. I can't quickly make that that uh, conversion yeah. in my head. Yeah. <laughs> so I figured, you know, one good uh, way I could use Python here is I'm just going to use Python to convert from um, Celsius to Fahrenheit. So if I um, show my code here, basically everything in the bottom is what David had set up. He had set it up so that he's setting up the channel settings uh, with the hardware, the timing settings, logging, uh, and he was continuously reading from that uh, thermocouple input module uh, to output the data into this graph here. So what I did was I added this Python node set up here, which if we look at this upper part, so first thing you've got here is this open Python session. That's where I'm gonna be feeding in the Python version. The version I have is 3.10. Um, once I've got that open, um, the next thing is the Python node. So this is actually where you're going to be interacting with a particular Python function. Um, let me quickly pull up this Python set function in Notepad++. It is extremely simple. I'm just importing uh, math. Um, I've called this function convert. I'm converting uh, temp in Celsius to temp in Fahrenheit. And what I'm doing is this Python node, I am first telling it the return type. So I'm telling it uh, the actual type it's gonna be returning, which is a double um, that I'm looking for there. I am feeding in as an input, the temperature that I'm measuring from down here in Celsius. And then again, it's going to output temperature in Fahrenheit. So you can see here, 
Um, 21 degrees Celsius is equivalent to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. After this, um, the Python node, when everything's finished, you're done with the while loop, you just simply close the Python session and that's all you need to do. But that is something that you would be able to do in, in traditional lab view, right? I mean, so, so why would you use Python here? Um, you know, what, are the, what are the cases in which you'd, you'd go that direction? Um, basically, what the customer was trying to do is they needed to know um, the temperature of a, of a fluid within a pipe at any depth within the pipe. So what they actually did was that they set up uh, thermocouples, about 18 thermocouples around the pipe, um, and then they pulled in and, and measured those thermocouples through a DAC system really similar to what I have here. Um, so they set up the DAC system, connected all the th different thermocouples, and then used LabVIEW to read in all the different thermocouples, which is what it's fantastic at. Uh, but they had already written the, um, the code for converting from the, the different temperature at the different locations to the temperature of the fluid at different depths. So they'd already written that actually in Python, and it didn't make sense for them to go through and, and make that really complicated um, equation in LabVIEW. Um, so rather than having to rewrite that, they were simply able to leverage the existing code that they already had. Uh, they were able to leverage that within LabVIEW itself. So they just did a similar thing here. Obviously, they're not just going to be um, inputting one different thermocouple. Uh, they're going to be they're going to be putting in all the different thermocouple measurements into a Python node. It's going to have a much larger equation than what I have here. But in the end, it's going to then output. Um, just one simple thing of a temperature at a certain depth in the pipe. Um, so you can you can see that for much more complicated situations, the same logic applies. So so one of the one of the features in the new lab view that you've mentioned, you've hinted at a little bit here that I'm particularly interested in is is the Python virtual environment. So can you explain a little bit how that how about how that would be used in this context, perhaps? So Python virtual environments are. Uh, self-contained environments that allow you to install and manage Python packages uh, separate from the system level packages installed on your computer. This is, an, uh, is a good example. Basically what I have here is I have uh, one Python uh, call that is going to be simulating a signal. And then the second one, which is going to be analyzing that signal. So you could say, Potentially, maybe one team worked on the function to simulate a particular signal, and then another team in a different version of Python worked on um, a fu of some functions to analyze a signal. So you can see here that the simulate signal is going to be done in, in Python 3.6.13, where the uh, signal analysis is done in 3.9.16. So if I run this, it'll look very similar to what's already been outputted, but you can see it is simulating here a signal with both a 400 um, frequency sine wave and then 4,000 frequency noise on the same plot that I plotted here. We're then feeding in that um, particular signal that we that we just graphed here into this second Python function, where it is actually going to go in and. Uh, analyze that, and it's going to output an FFT of, of the signal that comes in. So you can see here, um, we've got the 400 and the 4,000 um, function both showing up here. Um, and then it's going to filter and show the FFT once a noise removed. So you can see it's only showing that 400 frequency sine wave now, uh, the no longer showing that 4,000 frequency noise. Um, and then it's showing you the um, function after it's removed. So this is just showing an example of a time where I am calling in and, and within one uh, LabVIEW VI, I am um, running code from one version of Python and then another version of Python. And you could do these both at the exact same time. So this is really great because um, it really, this is allowing uh, LabVIEW uh, developers to follow best Python practices um, when integrating Python code in, because really just in general, using Python virtual environments are best practice. And let me really quickly just pull up Anaconda to give some reasons for that. Uh, Anaconda is the tool that I use to create these different virtual environments. 
you can see that I created one virtual environment with data now for data analysis. And then I did another one for signal simulation. So one signal simulation is what I'm calling into here. Uh, the data analysis, what I'm calling into here. Um, by having these different packages, I'm able to make sure that for one, I'm using the, the versions of Python that I actually want and that, that meet um, the requirements for all the packages and everything that I want to use. Uh, and then two, um, if I want to share this later, it makes it much easier. That's great. Um, well, I'm really excited. I think everybody else is probably too to get their, uh, like I said, get their hands dirty, get into the latest version of LabVIEW and start messing around with Python and seeing what they can do uh, with the strength of both uh, pieces of software, where can people go to find out more if they're interested in learning more about Python, learning more about LabVIEW and learning more about both of them together? Yeah, yeah, that, that's a great question. So we recently just released this new page. So if you go to ni.com forward slash Python, make sure I spelled that right. Yep, I did. ni.com forward slash Python. It will take you to our new um, NI products in Python page. So this is going to be the page where we're going to have all of our different, um, all of our information for how NI products work with Python. Uh, that that's going to be on the uh, hardware side. So all the different Python libraries that are available um, for our different hardware, uh, and then the the ways that Python works for our software too. So uh, we also have links to resources, to GitHub stuff, support everything like that. So. Uh, for now and in the future, we're going to kind of have this be the landing page for everything NI and Python. So highly recommend you go uh, here first. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much, Austin. We really appreciate your time today.